Yeah, so those exploding sounds that you might hear in the background of this video, uh, just excuse those. That's my IRA portfolio blowing up after Amazon reported their Q3 earnings and the stock is down over 19% in the after hours. That was after being down 4% during the regular trade and over the last year down 34% in the after hours. Amazon trading close to $88 per share. I have to keep extending this fake red candle. This stock earlier today was closer to $111 per share. We're seeing over $22 per share get shed off of Amazon. That is of course after the company released their Q3 earnings. Revenue came in at 127 point one billion dollars that was missing expectations by about 370 million dollars that was still 14 percent growth close to 15 percent growth year over year they did beat expectations on those earnings side but when we come over here and we look at the financials the earnings are kind of deteriorating a little bit we'll look at the aws segment we'll look at all the different business segments they got advertising they've got their prime subscriptions they've obviously got the amazon.com retail business we'll take a look at all the different business segments with Amazon, but particularly concerning is the fact that you have slowdown in that growth in AWS. And then when we look at the profits from Amazon, they're all coming from that business unit. So clearly investors a little concerned and We'll see if I'm a little concerned as we go through these numbers. But I think the number one thing that is having this stock fall is, I, first of all, I think the AWS profits, which we'll show you here in a moment, don't look good. The growth rate doesn't look good. We'll see if it's able to reaccelerate. But here's your net sales expected for the Q4. So we'll talk about in depth here in a moment, Q3. But let's take a moment and talk about the guidance for Q4, expecting revenues to be between $140 billion up to about $140 eight billion dollars here's the problem wall street is expecting a number close to 155 billion dollars now there were 38 wall streets making that predictions you have some as high as 161 billion dollars whatever he's smoking you probably want a little bit of that too although you do have some analysts as low as about 130 so they beat some conservative estimates didn't come anywhere close to the kind of the high flying estimate but they're well underneath the average of those two at a hundred and $55 billion between 140 and 148 is a mile away from $155 billion. That is also contributing to Amazon stock absolutely tanking in the after hours. And I tell you what, if Amazon is only going to achieve, we'll give them credit somewhere in between here. We'll call it $142 billion in terms of revenue for the Q4. Again, the Q4, the all important shopping season here in the United States. Well, how in the heck are they going to do $133 billion in Q1? $138 billion in Q2 and $145 billion in Q3. And then all the way into next year, boost this all the way up to $176 billion. Excuse me if I seem a little skeptical. I think that is also what is going to have to come in. Because when we looked at this stock, we had kind of a mid-teens grower on that revenue side. And look, nobody is buying this for earnings. We'll, we'll look at it when we come over here to the financials. There are no earnings here, okay? So you have to buy this for this revenue growth. And if we're going to go from mid-teens down to kind of single-digit growth on that revenue side, well, yeah, you're going to have to re-rate the stock from a valuation perspective. Let's come over here and look at these numbers. The way Amazon set things up, it's actually your second column is the most recent quarter far left-hand column is a year ago. Your total net sales year over year went from $110 billion up to $127 billion. I don't want to just flow over there like that's nothing, okay? We don't look at any other company, really, that does this type of revenue in a quarter. I mean, $127 billion in three months is more than almost every company does in their entire lifetime. But that's about all we'll do in terms of praising Amazon in terms of these results because your operating expenses also balloon over the last quarter. Your cost of sales went from roughly 63 up to 72.3. Your fulfillment cost obviously up. Your technology cost up. Sales and marketing up quite a bit. And your general administrative also up. So your total operating expenses over the last year, we'll call that 106. That's 
$1.6 billion, all the way up to close to $125 billion. So you tacked on nearly $19 billion worth of expenses when your net sales grew just $17 billion. So you guess what happened to operating income? Last year was at four point, call that $4.9 billion. It was not quite cut in half, but down tremendously, down to $2.5 billion. So off $127 billion worth of revenue, you have to minus off $124.6 billion worth of costs, and you get just $2.5 billion worth of operating income after you pay some taxes and some interest. Your net income of just $2.9 billion, that's just 28 cents per diluted share. Now, they beat expectations, so don't think that Wall Street wasn't expecting to earn basically nothing on a, a mountain of revenue, okay? They actually beat expectations on that EPS side by about seven cents per share. So Wall Street was actually expecting the expenses or the cost of sales to actually be a little bit worse than it was. That's why I wouldn't really focus on the profits over at Amazon. If you don't want to invest in Amazon because they don't make any money off of their revenue, that is totally fine. And that's up to you. It's a good decision considering, again, the stock is down a 20% in the after hours, but it's really this fourth quarter guidance that really comes up short. And now I want to flow you down to some other things that we'll look at over at Amazon. Now, first thing is first, let's look at that core kind of amazon.com e-commerce business. Look at what happened in North America. So again, the secondhand column is our most recent quarter in North America. You had about, we'll call that $79 billion worth of sales. Well, unfortunately you had $79.3 billion worth of costs. So, uh oh, you lost money in North America on that amazon.com business. Okay. Last year you actually made $880 million. That's really not good because if you've been following in this channel, you know their international market. First of all, you got the constant currency or not the constant currency. So you have those currency headwinds in the international markets, and that's really going to impact your earnings or your operating income there as well. So your net sales actually went down in that market from 29 billion down to 27.7. Look what happened to your operating expenses. They actually went up. That's really bad from 30 billion up a tick to 30.2. So last year you lost 911 million dollars on that business. This year you lost a whopping $2.5 billion. So that's where a lot of your losses got racked up over at this company. The fact that you swung from a profitable North American business to now losing money and you were already losing money in the international market. Now you're losing a boatload over 2.4, nearly $2.5 billion. Now here's the all important AWS business segment. The revenue growth still looks okay. We'll show that to you from a percentage basis here in a moment. You went from 16.1 billion all the way up to about $20.5 billion. Your operating expenses went from 11.3 up to about 15.1. Here's your operating income. It went from four point, call that 4.9 billion up to just about $5.4 billion. So that is not great operating income growth. And I'll show you AWS's growth here on a percentage basis. Year over year change, just 27 percent growth on a constant currency basis. They were growing in that high thirties, nearly 40% growth rate for several quarters in a row. And it's really come to a screeching halt in the most recent quarter. That's also probably the biggest reason why this stock is heading lower in the after hours. When you come over here to the balance sheet, I was particularly paying close attention to this inventory number. Now we don't get a year over year comparison on here. We do look at the end of the year to the current time frame that these financial resorts are ended at. So you get kind of a nine month window here, but not a ballooning of inventory that I think is overly concerning for Amazon. Your cash is quite substantial at Amazon. And so nothing to be concerned about how maybe they need to raise some money. Although we see that they did raise a little bit of money in the most recent quarter. You come down here to long-term debt. You went from 48 up to 58 over the last year. Nothing concerning from that perspective, but there's a reason why Amazon kicks their financial reports. When you come to their financial reports, they tell you all the cool stuff they did and uh, in all a bunch of words, but the first actual financial report that they show you is cash flow. So Amazon is going to want you to value this company based on its cash flows. 
And there's a reason why for that, because the cash flow statement actually is the prettiest when you come and look at these financials. So again, our second column is our most recent column, our net income loss that we pulled down. I showed that to you on the statement of operations. We lost $2.8 billion in the most recent quarter off of this $127 billion worth of revenue. So you take this $2.8 billion number and you come over here and you stick it to the top of cash flows. Then with Amazon, you get to add things back in like depreciation. Okay. They're building all these big fulfillment centers and they're doing all this different stuff. Well, that's a non-cash charge. Okay. You capitalize that cost right up front and then you depreciate it over a period of time. So that's not cash getting sucked out of the business. It's just getting sucked out from an accounting principal purpose. And so they get to add that back in stock-based compensation in the most recent quarter. Well, oh, thank you, Amazon. So you earn just $2.8 billion, but guess what? They had over $5.6 billion worth of stock-based compensation that well exceeds even the net income, I believe, or the operating profits that the AWS business had. They're going to have to turn that around at Amazon as well, maybe right size that. You flow through all these addbacks and subtractions. You see your net cash provided by just operating Amazon's business, and it actually looks pretty good. Last year, you're in $7.3 billion on a quarterly basis. This year, all the way up to $11.4 billion. So it's actually pretty good. You added over $4 billion worth worth of operating cash flows over the last year on a quarterly basis. But when you come over here and look at the stock price, well, it is starting to inch back a little bit. Now we're down only 18% instead of 20. It paints a slightly better story when you look at cash flows. But again, what I like to do as an investor is I like to see what the market is paying attention to. And I think they're paying attention to the fact that Q4 revenue is going to come well underneath expectations and that AWS growth rate is not looking pretty as well. You come down here to your investing activities, which you really got to pay close attention to at Amazon because you did $16.4 billion worth of purchases of property, plant, and equipment. And when your core business is only generating $11.4 billion worth of positive cash flow, where you're already cash flow negative when it comes to those purchases of property, plant, and equipment, this is why this company is starting to pull back on those warehouses spaces and starting to pull back on a lot of their investing because they're looking at these numbers just like you and I and realizing they'll have a big problem if this trend continues. They issued some short-term debt here at about $12.4 billion, they repaid about eight of it, but net net is they took on a little bit of debt, roughly, we'll call that maybe $3 billion. So this company in the most recent quarter burned through about $2.5 billion. Again, this company is not going to go bankrupt. They're not going to go broke. They have plenty of money. This was a pretty bad quarter in a pretty bad economic environment, but this is not at all what you'd want if you're an Amazon shareholder. Now, coming over to the individual business segments, I really love this slide. This is towards actually the bottom of Amazon's metrics. And if you have never visited something like this, I, I strongly consider you and strongly encourage you to come down to the bottom. And always, this is actually the first thing I look at when Amazon reports their earnings. So you have the online stores, really strong growth here. We have 13% growth. If you factor in constant currency, so the bottom growth rate, it's constant currency. The right-hand column is not factoring that in. So you grew just 7%. And that is something to factor in when you're looking at Apple's and Amazon's and Microsoft's and all these companies' earnings is they're getting decimated by the strong dollar. Now, that will reverse at some time. The in my opinion, the stock prices will actually reverse before they actually hit the tape. So I wouldn't wait until the currency numbers get better from a earnings report where you can physically see them because as the dollar gets weak, maybe that trade reverses and all of a sudden the dollar gets weaker. Well, these stocks will automatically kind of go up in relation to that because every investor is going to know that all of a sudden instead of the earnings and the revenue growth looking weak, it's actually going to look a lot stronger in subsequent quarters. But look, 13% growth is the fastest rate that we've seen since Q2 of 2021. In fact, we were at basically no growth for the last year in that business. That is very exciting. You have physical stores. This is your Whole Foods. These are your other kind of smaller operations that Amazon operates from a physical store basis. That was up 10%, a little bit of deceleration over the last year, but it is a relatively small. In fact, it's one of the smaller business units here at just $4.7 billion. You have your third-party sellers. This is basically Amazon.com as well. These are 
or individual sellers that are selling their own goods. This is a very profitable business unit for Amazon as they're collecting commissions and fees instead of buying the goods themselves, which you see in kind of this first party online store. It's always good to see this number be at 23%. That is a fantastic number. In my opinion, what Amazon should do is actually pull back on their participation in their own market where they're buying the TVs, they're buying the pencils, or they're buying whatever goods that they're having on there. They should actually pull back from that and actually allow the third-party sellers to absorb that. That's just my opinion. That's one way that they could cut costs. That's another way they could drive profitability is actually get out of selling goods because when I showed you the results earlier, this company is not making money selling goods not here in North America, and they're not making money selling those goods in the international market so they really should just let these third-party sellers source and sell those goods. You've got the subscription services. Those are your prime memberships. I actually would have expected these to go up a little bit more with those Thursday football numbers, but those went up about 14%. You got about $8.9 billion quarterly run rate there. You've got your advertising services here. Hello, this is fantastic. Those were up 30% on a constant currency basis. Now, that business has decelerated a little bit. It was growing 70, 80, 50% but it's a more mature business now still growing your ad business at 30% when the last two quarters was 25 and 21%. That's showing you have a nice reacceleration back into their ad business. That's also a very profitable business. And then we talked about how AWS, it grew 37%, 39%, 40%, 37%, 33%, and then uh uh-oh, 28%. So now we've got a two handle in front of our growth rate with AWS. That is not good considering that's where all the profits are coming from. And then finally, you have this other segment that's up big time, up 168%. I think this, what this has to do with is the fact that they bought that MGM studios and they've acquired all this content and they're leasing a lot of that content out to like the Hulus and the other streaming services. So they're getting a little bit of payback there. I believe that is where that comes from. All things being considered, this was a complete disaster for Amazon. They have swung to operating losses here in North America for their Amazon.com business. The international market looks like a complete disaster as well. It was already losing money. And now with those currency headwinds and just the deeper recession and those energy costs in that market looks really, really bad. You have your AWS starting to slow from a revenue perspective and these operating income also not impressive growth for Amazon. And that is what's leading to the stock being down over 19, nearly 18% in the after hours. It's fluctuating quite a bit. This obviously takes this stock into this sideways consolidation area that we've talked about here on the channel. Weren't sure it would get this deep into this zone this quickly. But here we are with Amazon, clearly your downward channel with these two black lines that I have here, those are firmly intact and we're making a beeline to the bottom end of this channel, which would take you down to about $80 per share. This is certainly areas where I will be adding to my position of Amazon. I think my cost basis on this one, I started buying this one several years ago. I think my cost basis is $69.70. I didn't think I would get a chance to buy it at or near those prices again, but I guess that's what the market is giving us. This is still a solid company. This is still a company I believe in. This is some comp. This is a company with some levers to pull. When you have over a hundred and twenty-seven billion dollars worth of revenue, and the upcoming quarter you've got over a hundred and forty billion dollars worth of revenue. Obviously, you have a lot of cost and expenses to go along with that. But that also means there's a lot of cost and expenses you can start cutting. And I outlined them here on the show and some of the things that I think they should do. I actually think Amazon should pull back from being a first party seller and let the third party sellers, similar to an eBay or an Etsy, really take more and more of the inventory and take more and more of the sales. And Amazon just acts as a platform 
that is a far more profitable business than having to warehouse and source and purchase a lot of that inventory on your own. We'll see if AWS is able to reaccelerate. Obviously, as you head into a downturn, you will have a slowdown of spending when it comes to corporates and investing. But as that cycle spins back up, Amazon probably be well positioned, but obviously they've got much more competition this time around than they did maybe 10 years ago. The only thing I'm really concerned about is execution with Amazon. Andy Jassy, who we have pictured here, not necessarily proven, not necessarily somebody that's really communicated anything that I've voiced here. We'll certainly be watching that closely as we continue to watch these markets. Am I concerned about Amazon? Yeah, a little bit, but not enough to sell my stake like I've done with other investments like NVIDIA and Meta over the last year. But we'll obviously be here to cover it here on the channel and let you know if those things change as the information develops for Amazon. Hopefully guys enjoyed today's video. We'll be back again soon with more. Good luck with your investments.